Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and we're coming to you live at the Windy City Roundup in Chicago 2022. Joining me right now is Andrew Simpson, Chairman and CEO of Heart Test Laboratories. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is HSCS. Andrew, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm, I'm great. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's great to have you. So this is actually our first time doing an interview together covering Heart Test. So can you start us off with that quick overview of the company, and then we'll go from there? Yeah. So we're applying advanced technology and artificial intelligence to the EKG. And the purpose of that is to make it a far more valuable screening de device for your general practitioner or your frontline physician. We've all heard of somebody that's had a sudden heart attack or even died suddenly from a heart attack. And the big challenge for a frontline physician is they don't have a test that can tell you whether you've got heart disease. And that's what we're doing. Absolutely. So let's, let's get a little history. When did the company start and how did you evolve to where you're currently at today? Well, we took a, uh, the concept of the advanced signal processing and started moving forward with a, um, a commercial product in 2015. Um, the advent of artificial intelligence, we were one of the first people using machine learning, had a paper published in 2018, which is obviously very, very early. But really, the advent of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and applying that to the EKG has meant that we've been able to push things forward over the last few years, and we're now very close to um, regulatory approvals. Very good. So let, let's talk about the technology itself. What would you say makes it unique and different compared to, say, some of the legacy technology that's currently out there? Yeah, well, everybody's heard of the EKG. Probably many people have had an EKG, but the EKG was invented 100 years ago, and... The signal that you see, the trace, is simply time and voltage. That's an analog waveform. That isn't very valuable. So there's three types of heart disease. You've got electrical disease like atrial fibrillation, everybody's heard of, abnormal rhythm. And then you've got coronary arterial disease and you've got structural disease like uh, a valve issue. Well, the conventional EKG has nearly no efficacy, no effectiveness for the latter two, which are the big killers of people. We're applying uh, signal processing to extract all the valuable content from the electrical signal of the heart, which is frequency information. So people have heard of uh, FM for radio, a lot better than AM for radio. And basically, with all the data that you get out of that, we're now able to create algorithms that correlate to cardi cardiology-based testing for, so that a frontline physician can just very simply, 20-second test, run a test on you to say, have you got early heart disease or not? Absolutely. So uh, let's look at the competitive landscape, because I'm sure you're not the first company that realized, okay, EKG, that was created 100 years ago. Probably it's time for some sort of improvement. So uh, where are you in terms of the race to be the first, or are there others out there that are already kind of have some technology out there that is improving upon some of this legacy technology? Well, I'm glad you've asked that question, and you're completely wrong, because we are, were the first. So we were the very first people to have a publication in the Journal of American College of Cardiology on detecting cardiac dysfunction with an EKG back in 2018. Mayo Clinic in 2019 had a publication on a, on a different indication, but you, what you've seen over the last few years is a, is a plethora of research institutions who are publishing papers saying the EKG can do a lot more and this is going to be the start of a massive new wave. And in terms of commercialization, there's us and there's actually Mayo Clinic have just formed a, a, a business to push forward on this. And that's it. Nobody else is doing this. Um, you've seen people like iRhythm and Alive Core, you know, Cardio Mobile. They're all changing the, the form factor, the way that you wear an EKG. Now, the Apple Watch yeah. is doing that, yeah, yeah. but none of them are making the EKG do more in terms of its clinical inf indication, and that's what we're about. Absolutely. So you mentioned that the company is close to regulatory approvals. Tell us about the process, where are we currently at, and then what's your expected time to then commercialization, from what you can tell us, of course. Yes. So we're, we're uh, what's called a, a class two non-significant ri risk medical device, the importance of that is people shouldn't think about drug processes or interventional product processes. Um, it's a lot more straightforward. But we are a de novo product. So for the FDA, de novo means of new. So when I say we're doing something that's never been done before, the FDA agrees with me. We're a new product classification. 
So we actually put in a submission in 2020. Um, because you're doing something new, about half the companies don't get through first time around. We were one of those. But the FDA gave us a very, very clear landscape of what we need to do. The main thing being new, uh, a new validation study. So we are, that will be 550 patients, and we're over 500 patients through it. So that study will be complete uh, very shortly, and the results from that will be out. That will be a major catalyst for the stock. We'll be resubmitting to the FDA probably early next year, and then it Broadly, be a six-month process or so with the FDA. So I'd, I'd be expecting us to be on the market some point in 2023, uh, with clearly, you know, lots of good uh, evidence going forward in the next few months. Absolutely. And, and what's your background? You know, how, what were you doing prior to this company? Oh, for my for my sins, uh, I started as a, a chartered accountant, and then a, as an investment banker um, in the UK. But then I, I went on to run two very sizable companies. Not in this area, but I've always had a real interest in technology and me medical. And when I saw this, and I invested in it as an early investor in the company in a concept, uh, myself and our chief operating officer, who's got a technology background, and at the end of the day, we're applying technology, technology to a medical device, we decided that we push this forward for commercialization. And between us, you know, we've invested a lot in the company. I've put over a million dollars of my own money in. He's put broadly the same. And so we've had $60 million of investment. Our current stock price does, you know, completely belies that. It's about $11 million, but that's the land of being a micro cap. Um, so that's my background, really, is running big companies and then um, pushing this forward for the last several years. And last question in terms of the, the ongoing clinical trial that you have right now, with the hope of getting the approval and then commercialization, are we cashed up through all of this up until next year, or where, where is the company at in terms of that? Yeah, so uh, we've got sufficient cash to get us through the regulatory submission process, which is clearly going to be a, a big catalyst for stock value. Very good. All right, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on Heart Test Laboratories? Uh, well, our, our trading name is Heart Sciences, so if you put into the internet either uh, www.heartsciences.com or even hearttestlaboratories.com. Uh, you'll find our website, you'll find a lot more information. Obviously, we've got a full investor section there. Very good. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. Really do appreciate it and I look forward to our next update. Thanks, Robert. I really appreciate you having, having me today.